Wer ist über rechts? How are you? Morning, Chair. I'm fine. Thanks and yourself, Chair. Good. Hey, I was worried that I'll be late. <laughs> ah, you I'm made it. You, 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 you made it, Chair. They were able to release me from that physical meeting. <laughs> okay. Uh, in Cape Town. Okay. It's your best. Yeah. Uh, I see the apology of Honorable uh, Mamar Khan. Okay. And of uh, the DJ. All right. Yeah. But uh, I assume the minister, oh, yeah, he's in. Okay, good. All right. That's great. That's great. We must ask uh, Enrico to check uh, with uh, Mishuri and uh, and also Honorable Dango. Oh, Enrico is not in the meeting, Chairperson. Uh, he sent me a message to see his laptop. Okay. So, yeah. Let me, let me just try to remind Dango. Dango usually was expected to be sent to him by to be sent yeah. to him on his phone. Yeah, no, I did that, sir. I did that. Okay. Did that. But uh, the members who are in, uh, <clears throat> we do form a quorum because you okay. just have his honorable high, honorable Matevula, and honorable Pliny, and honorable Brotter, so we, we can proceed. Okay. All right. Let me then uh, uh, take this opportunity to recording in to, progress to formally uh, uh, open the meeting, uh, extending a word of welcome to to all the attendees, uh, the honourable members, the the uh, minister and the team. Uh, Today's meeting, as we all agree, uh, effectively two two items. Uh, uh, two items. The first one uh, is, uh, like as we have indicated, uh, we'll have two presentation. One in terms of the the uh, civil aviation uh, civil aviation uh, uh, bill. And then, uh, and also the presentation on the, the impact of uh, the July incident and on both the uh, transport and also related uh, activities that could have been choked by the by the uh, by the uh, the looting and also the blockage of uh, of roads. Uh, we want to, to appreciate uh, the presence of the, of the minister. Uh, we know that it, it's always difficult to, to secure his uh, presence, but let me the fact that uh, Wednesday is the cabinet meeting. Uh, and, uh, and also, we uh, indicate to us as to whether we have the, the, new, the new DM uh, today. But I think what is also critical is to also uh, indicate the, the standing uh, apology of Honorable Lansman because of the suspended ceremony. Uh, but you have also received the apology from the Honorable Mamar Khan and also uh, understand the DJ. Uh, let us then, without any waste of time, uh, hand over to the 
to the minister for his opening remarks. Over to you, minister. Uh, good morning, Chairperson of the Select Committee, Honorable Kenny uh, Moima. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Morning, 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 Minister. You are very honorable. No, thank you very much. Thank you, you can also yeah. see me. Yeah, I can definitely see you, Minister. <laughs> I might be addressing you sleeping, uh, uh, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, Honorable Members of the Committee. Our track record as a country with impeccable credentials on aviation safety, particularly in respect of commercial aviation, is something we must be proud of and sustain at all costs. This includes extending a similar track record uh, to non-commercial aviation. As a signatory to the Chicago Convention and a council member of ICAO, International uh, Civil Aviation Organization, we must do everything in our power to lead by example in ensuring and sustaining safety of our airspace. There is no doubt that once this bill is passed into law, it will ensure that South Africa continues to meet the international obligation in the civil aviation arena. This in fact will strengthen the sector's contribution uh, to South Africa's economic development and to serve as a catalyst for increased trade, tourism, and job creation. We cannot emphasize enough that this bill enables us to continue making strides in our contribution to the global effort of aviation safety. Since the promulgation of the Civil Aviation Act of 2009, certain sections of chapter four of the act have never been brought into effect due to practical difficulties in the establishment of the Aviation Safety uh, Investigation Board. This bill addresses all these issues and its passage will exponentially strengthen our aviation incident and accident investigation. The independence of this board is an important factor that will bolster the robustness and objectiveness of all incident and accident investigations. The bill also provides for the conclusion of a performance agreement between the minister and the Aviation Safety Investigation Board. This is important in ensuring that the board delivers on its mandate and its work is in keeping with the provisions of the international conventions and treaties. In streamlining, and strengthening of appeals mechanisms, it is critical in ensuring that those who are aggrieved by decision taken in terms uh, of this act have recourse. Streamlining, streamlining the appeals bodies also creates a single focal point for all appeals, which ensures accessibility to all those who wish to lodge uh, appeals. The importance of broadening the mandate of the South African Civil Aviation Authority, SACA, to include environmental protection is an important step towards realizing our own commitment to meeting the targets of the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The bill further introduces an important provision of making SACA a preferential creditor. However, this is only in respect of monies collected and held on its behalf. This is no different from an employer collecting tax revenue on behalf of SARS. Such monies are not related to any commercial arrangement between SACA and, particular, and uh, a particular entity, but is collected on behalf of SACA in terms of the law. The bill similarly seeks to strengthen the South African Civil Aviation Authority by strengthening a number of governance issues, which include provisions for the removal of the Commissioner for Civil Aviation. This also extends to the provision of a shareholder representative on the board uh, of uh, the authority. I thank you, Chairperson. 
Thank you, thank you, Honorable Minister, for the opening remarks where you were able to highlight uh, the, the background against which this civil aviation, aviation amendment bill uh, is, uh, is introduced. And uh, you also outlined the papers among them, the challenges encountered uh, to make provision for the establishment of the, of the safety investigation board, but also take good care of the environmental aspect of it and also uh, uh, incorrect references to ministries and also government institution, but also to make provision for, for criminal offenses. Uh, we, are, we, we, we are happy uh, with the, uh, the purpose and the, and, and, and the background uh, as articulated by the minister. Uh, we will then, uh, without any waste of time, allow the the the, uh, the DG uh, or the designated person then to to present the the uh, the item. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, honourable chairperson uh, of the committee. Uh, okay, let me. Let me let me show myself uh, so that uh, Chairperson and the Honourable people can see uh, that you're not talking to that. That's me, Chris Sabisa. Uh, uh, no, welcome, 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 Mr. Sabisa. Thank you very much, Honourable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honourable Minister, uh, our Minister Badula. Thank you very much for the opening remarks, Minister, and. Uh, uh, I can just say what we are going to do here is we have prepared a presentation with that covers as per what the select committee was wanting us to do. That would be in the issues of the aviation and also what has happened uh, with, with the road-based transport as well as the issues of aviation. If I would be given that opportunity, I can introduce my team that, uh, that is going to be uh, engaging with the portfolio committee in front of the minister and uh, taking sure, making sure that we amplify in some, uh, in some other areas where the need uh, arises. I think, uh, Chairperson, if that would be acceptable, we will take that cue and uh, as prepared by, 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 by the team at Transport. Uh, let me get, uh, you know, uh, let me take you from the Chairperson whether that would be an acceptable approach uh, from us. Thank you, Chair. It, it, it is acceptable. Uh, I also wanted to check whether do we have the deputy minister here? Uh, no, she's not here. We have a clash. Okay. She's, she's representing us at the portfolio committee. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you for the clarity, uh, minister. Uh, let's, let's then uh, deal with the introduction of, of the team as uh, indicated by Mr. Shavisa. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Honourable Minister, thank you once again, Minister, for uh, the guidance. We'll take you from what uh, our Minister has said uh, on issues of uh, aviation, on issues of road-based transport, as I indicated, and we also look into the issues of rail uh, transport as well. So what we are going to do, I've got, uh, I've got uh, members of the team that are here who has been working very hard uh, on the presentation uh, as a collective. And I, I needed to say we are going to be, we have assigned uh, uh, Prasant Mohan to take us through the presentation. And I do have uh, also uh, the team from the aviation sector uh, led by Ms. Imshe, who's going to be also at amplifying some other issues where necessary. And then I got uh, Nwako Makaipie, who's also heading uh, the, the rail branch. They are all here. So it's just a way of introduction quickly, uh, Chairperson. And uh, I think uh, what we're going to do now, I'll hand over to, uh, to Prasan Mohan to take us through the whole presentation. And I will request that members of my team would uh, also amplify where necessary as and when required. And uh, especially when it comes to uh, a question and answer session. But uh, allow us chairperson and minister to, uh, to engage as we, as we go along. Maybe I will, Prasan will stop here and there, or especially on the rail side. Then I'll invite my colleague Mwako to amplify here and there, and then we continue and we deal with the, the issues of uh, aviation. I'll ask uh, uh, Mayor Mshe to also do the same, 
and then we'll conclude and then we'll hand over to the chairperson and honorable minister. Thank you very much. I think let me, without a waste of more time now, ask uh, Prasant Mohan to take us through the presentation as, as prepared. Thank you very much, Prasant. We are on the floor. Thank you. And good morning, uh, Chairperson, uh, Honorable Minister, and members of the committee. Um, I am uh, Prasant Mohan, uh, Chief Director, Road Infrastructure Department of Transport, and I will uh, ask the, the Secretary, may, may I be allowed to share the presentation on the screen, please? Do, do we agree that you start with the, with the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill first? Oh, okay. Then that, that presentation is being presented by my colleague, Elizabeth. Yeah, let's start with the Civil Aviation Amendment Bill first, and then we'll go to the second presentation. Okay, Chair Basson, I will ask her. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Oh, um, good morning uh, to the chairperson, members of the select committee, minister, and all protocol observed. I don't know if I'm required to share the presentation from my side, or will the secretary be assisting us with flagging the presentation on the screen? Thank you, secretary. Thank you, chairperson. Well. Uh, the department must flag the presentation on their side. We have given them uh, uh, hosting rights, so they can do so. Okay, great. Let's let's then. Noted. Continue. Thank you. Can I then get an indication on whether we can see the presentation on the screen? Indeed, indeed, it is uh, very clear and uh, also audible. You can hit the ground running. Okay, um, then we, in terms of the table of contents, we are going to cover the background, the purpose of the bill, objectives of the bill, and we are also going to give a summary of the clauses that are incorporated in the bill. And we'll also uh, do a reflection on the consultations um, that were done. So to, to give a bit of a background, uh, we have the current act, which is the Civil Aviation Act. And the act provides for the establishment of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board which has the powers to investigate aircraft incidents and accidents within the Republic. The act also establishes the South African Civil Aviation Authority, and that's an authority vested with the powers to promote civil aviation safety and security. And in terms of, in, in, in his opening address, Minister referred to the practical difficulties that we encountered in proclaiming chapter four of the current act. And this is the chapter that actually talks to the establishment of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board. And the purpose of the bill, it, it addresses the challenges encountered in, in applying the current act that we have it recti and rectify identified inconsistencies and makes provision for latest developments in aviation. It also provides for the establishment of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board. It gives uh, the CAA environmental protection oversight function because currently um, the functions at the CAA are only limited to aviation safety and security. So, this act therefore um, gives them um, environmental protection oversight function in addition to the two that they are currently performing. It further rectify uh, incorrect references to ministries and government institution. It also provides for additional criminal offenses in the sphere of civil aviation security. It provides for the effective enforcement mechanism and, and, and gives the minister additional powers 
to make recommendations, to make regulations, um, apologies. And, and in terms of the objectives of the bill, uh, the bill seeks to strengthen the aviation safety, security, and environmental protection regulatory framework to ensure sustainability and stability of the civil aviation industry. As the country, uh, there are certain international obligations that we are required to meet. And the act, the bill therefore seeks to ensure that we uh, meet those um, obligations. And the next uh, slide then gives a um, summary of, of what is actually included in uh, the clauses to the bill. And, and, and this section then looks at uh, clauses from clauses one until 16. And, and it, it talks to um, amend, amendment, amending the existing and inserting new definitions rectifying references to certain ministries and government department, aligning the act with section 231 of the constitution, removing obsolete references and, and effecting textual improvement. And it substitutes uh, chapter four of the current act so that we can then redefine the establishment of an accident, aircraft accident and incident uh, investigation. It rectifies the provisions relating to the establishment of the South African Civil Aviation Authority and gives the South African Civil Aviation Authority environmental protection oversight function. It makes provision for the civil aviation, uh, for the CAA as the preferential creditor in respect of any money, fees, charges, or levies collected on, on its behalf, and it removes incorrect references and effect textual changes. And the next slide covers clauses 17 to 46, and, uh, it, and it, it, uh, it deals with uh, doing away with the requirements for the development of the corporate uh, governance plan. Uh, the CAA is not listed under uh, it's not listed as a, as a public entity under the schedules that are prescribed in the PFMA, and, and therefore it does not actually need to uh, submit corporate plans, and therefore this clause then um, is actually addressing that. It also makes the bill, then makes provision for an employee of the department to be a member of the Civil Aviation Authority Board, um, it amends the provisions relating to the appointment and removal of the commissioner, the commissioner for civil aviation and matters related to his or her functions and responsibility. It amending the provisions relating to the performance agreement between the minister and the aviation safety investigation board clarifies the provisions relate dealing with conflicts of interest provides uh, for the designation of the chairperson of the National Aviation Sec Security uh, Committee and matters connected with the operations of the committee. And it deletes the provisions dealing with compliance notices, and it further amends the provisions dealing with appeals. And from clauses 47 to 65, the bill authorizes the minister to issue exemptions and to prescribe additional offenses and additional enforcement mechanism. It extends the power of the minister to make, recommend, to make regulations um, to further remove the procedures for the establishment of consultative uh, structures to the regulation. And in terms of consultation, the department conducted a series of stakeholder uh, engagement with uh, the entities that are actually flagged here. And, and those entities included the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation, the CAA, the Airports Company, South Africa, Air Traffic and Navigation Services, our Airline Association of Southern Africa, which represents the interest of our South African registered airline. We also had the Board of Aviation Representative of South Africa, 
which represents the interests of a foreign registered airline. And we also had um, the Civil Aviation Regulations Committee, the National Air Transport Facilitation Committee. Uh, we further consulted with National Economic Development and Labor Council and the Economic Sector Employment and Infrastructure Development Cluster sector. And uh, we are then articulating here that the bill was approved by cabinet on the 5th of September, 2018. And the bill was then introduced in uh, parliament on the 8th of October, 2018. And we further then articulate here that uh, we went to PICOT and PICOT adopted the report on the bill with amendments on the 17th of March, 2021. And the bill was further subjected to the second reading debate on the 11th of May, 2021, and was passed by the National Assembly and, and transmitted to the NCOP. Um, I thank you, uh, Chair Pesson. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you, Ma, for the, for the uh, presentation. Uh, Let's then uh, open the, the, the floor for engagement from honorable members. Uh, you can use your uh, raise your hand option. Chairperson. Uh, yeah, no honorable five. Chairperson. Yes, uh, May I request uh, Ma'am, get to take off the presentation. Okay. I guess she will definitely do that. Ma'am, Pia? Noted, Chairperson. Um, Technology is failing me here, but I'm attempting to. There we go. Thank you, Chair. Thanks a lot. On uh, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Greetings uh, uh, to the Minister and the team, and uh, also to Honorable Members. Uh, Chair, uh, just my concern with the presentation, uh, it's uh, too summarized. Uh, you know, uh, I was looking at my uh, uh, other documents of the bills that have been presented uh, uh, by the Department. I came across uh, the Arto bill. Uh, it was detailed. Each clause was explained uh, what its purpose uh, in terms of uh, amending a particular section. Uh, but this thing of saying from clause uh, uh, one to clause 46, in between, we don't know what clause one, clause two, up to 46 means. Uh, it's just a summary. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy with the, how this was a summarized. I want to also challenge uh, Elizabeth to go back to that uh, Arto presentation. I know it was in the previous term, uh, but it was because it's the uh, only one I could uh, see now because I couldn't look at all the presentation. It was more detailed in terms of what each clause uh, means. Uh, but I, I, I'm just raising as a concern, but perhaps we will be dealing uh, uh, with all these clauses uh, when we interact with the bill uh, in terms of the, uh, the processes, which include the, the public hearings and the close by close discussion. But it would be, have been better if uh, when it is introduced, uh, we are given details, not just the summarized version uh, of uh, its uh, 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 clause. Just uh, two questions and uh, that I pick up. Uh, I, I just wanted to check uh, with regard to the, the, the aviation, uh, civil aviation, uh, I think it's an investigation board. Um, my question would be why shouldn't uh, just have uh, the Authority, aviation, civil aviation authority, and then the 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 investigation be a program the, of the authority. 
instead of having uh, uh, these two uh, bodies. Uh, so I just want the clarity with regard to that, especially when it is uh, reported that uh, that particular chapter uh, could not be uh, uh, implemented for various reasons that have been articulated. Uh, so my question is around uh, that, that aspect. I think that uh, there, there was another clause. Um, it's not, that's why I'm saying that uh, the problem is that uh, this has not been uh, explained. Uh, but when I look at the actual bill, uh, Chair, the, there's, a, there's a clause that, uh, uh, I just want to open the actual bill because the, the presentation is really not helping. Um, Can I come back on this one? Because I'm checking it on the bill because I saw it, but it, it, it talks about uh, the role of a, a parliament. Um, but I'll, uh, I'll have to come back to, to, so that I don't right. delay the meeting. Yeah, I'll have to come back on that in, the, in the bill. I'll give you an opportunity to come back on that one. Let me uh, move over to Honorable Tim Prakasat. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I echo the sentiments of Honorable Khair. My apologies this morning. I'm, I'm dealing with the after effects of the second uh, vaccination jab, so I'm getting that, uh, that little bit of a fluey feeling. <laughs> um, but I think I'll be all right. Um, Chair, yeah. Um, I also would like to see a lot more detail, so I'm just going to uh, reserve my comment for now. Uh, thank you. All right. Uh, while Honorable Khai is still, uh, is still probably uh, looking for that aspect, uh, maybe let's give over to uh, Committee Secretary just to outline processes uh, uh, from here. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, the processes from here, Chairperson, uh, the committee has to take a decision uh, whether to advertise this bill in all you know, publications and also then uh, whether then uh, after, advertise, after advertising the bill, then uh, the committee will have to do, you know, the public participation. So these are the processes that at least uh, we need to establish. Uh, the committee needs to establish. Then it means this bill, after this presentation today, then uh, the bill will be advertised. Then we request for 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 for, for, for written comments. Then after receiving the, the written comments, we'll come back and uh, consider those comments. Uh, if needs be, the committee will have to decide whether then uh, those who have, you know, <clears throat> who are willing, you know, to do uh, the oral submissions, uh, will the committee allow so? Then, uh, yeah, that's how far the process will go, Chairperson. Thanks for that. Let's then go back to another five. Yeah. So I, I, I think I will have to raise it maybe as part of uh, the processes because uh, there were two bills. There's one that, uh, which is a, um, a bill from the department and then they amended one uh, from uh, uh, the portfolio committee. So uh, I'm trying to get the one from uh, the portfolio committee. This is where I, I pick up uh, this particular issue that I wanted uh, to raise, uh, but I'm still battling now to get the, the one from uh, the, the portfolio committee. The one I'm having with me right now is the one from the department or from the minister. So I see perhaps if I could just get a response on the earlier question I, I asked with regard to why having two bodies, the investigation board uh, and also the, the authority? 
Right. Uh, Nempe, can we give you the platform to respond to uh, the question as posed by Marwa Pai? Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. As, as I indicated in my presentation, as the country, we have a number of international obligations that we need to meet. And, and one of those obligations uh, relates to the Chicago Convention. As, as a member state to the Chicago Convention, we are um, supposed to, we are required actually to comply with um, a KO, International Civil Aviation Organization requirement. And, and in terms of the Annex 13 of the Chicago Convention, uh, member states are required to establish an independent accident, aircraft accident and incident investigation authority. And that needs to be independent from the Civil Aviation Authority. And, and what happened in 2017, we, we had an audit from AKO. They came to the country to come and do their audit. And, and then we got a finding because the aircraft accident and incident uh, unit was actually within uh, the CAA. And we got a finding as a country. Uh, and they were actually saying that we are kind of creating a situation where civil aviation authorities, the referee and a player, and hence we are seeking to rectify that in this bill. And, and with regard, we've, we've noted the comments from the members with regard to the summarized uh, version of the presentation. We, we have prepared because we thought that we are, if we include all the clauses, we are actually going to end up with a very lengthy presentation. But, but however, we've prepared a web document uh, in a template format that actually outlines uh, each and every clauses from clause one until clause 60, 60 until clause 65. Uh, and it, it clearly outlines the, the activities that we are actually changing on each and every clause. We can make that template available to the members. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank, thank, thank you uh, for that uh, clarification. Uh, are you happy with that? Yes, I'm happy with the clarification, but I've also been able to get the issue that I wanted to raise. Uh, if you allow me. Can you hear me, Chair? Yes, yes, yes. Do, do we agree that uh, obviously because uh, you, 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 are, you are struggling a bit to get uh, the the one from the committee? Uh, oh, I did find it. Uh, there's there's a section that talks about. Uh, I think uh, it says uh, it's on page eight from line forty eight, uh, and under that it says uh, D. The minister must submit the list uh, contemplated in paragraph C to Parliament. E, Parliament must conduct interviews and make recommendation of at least seven names in order of reference to the minister to appoint five members of the Aviation uh, Safety Investigation Board. My, 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 the clarity I need there, Chair, is that it, it says Parliament, and Parliament is made up of uh, the two houses. So how is this going to, to take place? Uh, is it each house must say uh, conduct interviews. Uh, can, can I get clarity with regard to that aspect? Because yeah? normally some of the these issues that have to do with interviews are done by the uh, by the National Assembly, uh, but in this case the clause specifically says Parliament, and Parliament is made out of the two houses. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hai. Can we get a response to, to that? May Elizabeth? Uh, 
I've, I've, I've noted the uh, comment chair and and this is this is one of the recommendations that we got from PCOT and I want our understanding is that uh, uh, that Parliament was going to assist with coordinating on how to deal with this issue. Thank you chair. Okay. Uh, Maybe. You, you have still not uh, clarified. Uh, so this is a recommendation from, from, from the National Assembly. Yes, Chairperson. Okay. Uh, all right. I think uh, probably then uh, uh, let's get a sense from, from Marul Khai. Are you happy uh, with, the, with the response? And then probably we'll then engage uh, further, uh, just to get a sense in terms of uh, the, le the legalese around, around, around that proposal, uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of its uh, uh, workability. Chair, Chair, I just wanted to check usually when we deal with the bills, there would be a, a person from legal unit of parliament, if uh, the, uh, he or she uh, can also express a view. Uh, on this particular issue. Let's check the uh, committee secretary to have uh, uh, the legal uh, advisors. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, we don't have the legal advisor from parliament, but we do have the state legal advice in this meeting. Yes, can, can, we, can we probably then uh, uh, get a sense from the state law advisor in terms of uh, the view expressed, so that as we as, as, as we meet after we have advertised, at least there is a, a semblance of how to deal with that. It, it looks like it looks like uh, this matter we will have to probably then uh, in the next meeting uh, probably uh, prepare ourselves on this aspect, uh, meaning that uh, we'll have to also get uh, our our legal advisors. Uh, but I think, uh, given how the process must unfold, can we agree that we definitely, like we have done with the with the previous uh, 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 bills that were that that were taken before us. Uh, advise, advertise and then uh, uh, get uh, deal with those written comments and then probably we'll take it from there unless there's an addition an, an, an addition in terms of in terms of that there's a hand chair yes oh from Ms. Raksha yeah let's 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 give Ms. Raksha uh, an opportunity Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm Raksha Harichran, the Senior State Law Advisor um, for this matter. Chair, um, just to, um, if the, the um, remark can please be repeated, Chair, so we can reply to that. Thank you. The, the there's a from the, from the, from the, from the, the committee, from the committee uh, decision, there is a, there is a, a referral that was made uh, by Honorable Khai uh, in terms of uh, its it, it responsibilities around it. So Honorable Khai wanted to check as to whether does the referral to parliament include both houses or only the National Assembly? Maybe Honorable Khai can just probably pinpoint that section again so that uh, Mr. Hakshran can uh, uh, get a sense of what you were saying. Okay. It, on, I think it's on the first page of the the amendments uh, from the from the National Assembly Portfolio Committee. If you go, if you start from uh, one, it's two, three, four, five, and then under clause four uh, on that page, it says. The minister may in a no no it's not the one sorry let me further go down oh then under clause uh, 
eight. If you go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and then there's a there's D, which says the minister must submit the list con contemplated in paragraph C to Parliament. And then he says Parliament must conduct interviews and make recommendation of at least seven names in order of preference to the minister to appoint the five members of the Aviation Safety Investigation Board. So my question is that normally when it comes to board, whether you're talking a uh, SABC board uh, or other boards, uh, that is normally conducted interviews for such bodies, even with the uh, uh, public protector, for example. Normally boards uh, that are appointed uh, are appointed uh, by the National Assembly. Uh, usually the National Council of Provinces is not involved. Um, so I wanted to, to check then on this aspect, uh, whether this clause is, is uh, okay, or it will be treated the same way that, uh, for example, the NYADA, NYDA is a, uh, interviews are conducted. I just wanted clarity on that aspect. I hope I'm clear now, sir. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Abba Khai. Uh, Ms. Ashraf. Thank you, Chairperson, for that clarity. Uh, Chairperson, we've noted that comment. If you may please come back to that question a little later, if possible. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Can we then pack it and agree that we will further uh, make uh, make uh, a research on that. Uh, can we then, uh, do we agree, uh, honorable members, that uh, this matter will then go for an advert on the, the two newspapers that you have agreed upon, uh, that we have dealt with, uh, that we have used uh, in our previous uh, bills that we dealt with, and then uh, uh, get written, written comments, and then uh, uh, Adopt the, the report once you have processed it and then it, uh, recommend it to the House. Any uh, opposition agree, to Chair. that? Yes, Tim? Uh, Chair, yes, I, I agree with the process. Let's just go with due process. I think uh, advert normally indicates and the comments normally indicate the level of interest in the bill and the level of uh, opposition to the bill. And then we can assess that once we receive that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you too. Uh, any seconder? Okay, check. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Honorable Khai and Honorable Team for, 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 for agreeing to the uh, way forward in terms of processing the, the, the bill. And uh, thanks the, the team for, 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 for the presentation. Uh, it put us in a much more better position to take the process forward. Can we then uh, go to the next presentation? Uh, which is the which is an update in terms of uh, the impact of the of the violence of the July uh, uh, disruption on the on, on the transport sector. Over to you, Mohan. Uh, let me find out from the minister as to whether is there any uh, uh, probably a reflection that the minister would want to make before Mohan takes over on this aspect. Yes, Chair. Can I go ahead? Yes, 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 Honourable Minister. Okay, thank you. Uh, colleagues, uh, uh, honourable members, um, as it has been uh, uh, said before, I'm with uh, the DDG, uh, Chris, Mr. Chris Clavisa and the team, which you have already uh, introduced. I will just lead into this discussion with a few uh, remarks. In recent months, we, was, we witnessed unrest characterized by acts of uh, vandalism, looting, destruction um, of economic infrastructure and blockages on the roads. This included touching of trucks, transporting goods, um, this event resulted in major disruptions in the supply chain 
and the freight and logistics sector, both on the road uh, and rail. In contextualizing the impact on the economy, the road freight sector moves more than 70% of all industrial cargo in the country. Since the outbreak of the unrest on 9 July 2021, the national um, routes N2 running through the north coast of Devon and the N3 uh, uh, between Sidara and Harry Smith were affected. The impact of the unrest on the N3 in relation to freight is estimated at uh, 3.2 billion of freight per day. Since 12 July 2021, the N3 uh, highway uh, traffic dropped below 100 vehicles per day. Over 40 trucks were damaged at an estimated cost. of 250 to 300 million, 26 of them at Moy River along N3 Highway. Affected truck operators operating a cross-border service are already actively seeking alternative routes through other Southern African countries avoiding South Africa. Cargo owners are also looking at transporting their cargo through Namibia, Angola, Mozambique, and further north. If this trend continues, South Africa is at the risk of losing its gateway status for transit freight. These developments have had an adverse impact on small businesses, such as fuel stations, truck stops, and small towns that rely on the freeway economic activity as a result of traffic using alternative routes. A number of Houghton bound trucks coming from neighboring countries through Bait Bridge were parked at the border for days, fearing possible violence. The closure of the entry had a significant impact on traffic volumes that rely on this highway, which traffic is access is uh, uh, access of uh, excess of six thousand heavy vehicle per day. The four-day closure of entry meant 12 billion worth of goods did not arrive at their intended destinations. As a consequence, the supply chain uh, bottleneck took weeks to clear. It is important to note that Transnet declared force majeure as a result of disruptions on the rail network feeding the ports with a knock-on effect on ports and manufacturing hubs in Gauteng and Devon Pine Town hubs. Public transport infrastructure damaged included six Go Devon stations in Eteguini and four Riavaya stations in Johannesburg municipality. In Eteguini, the public transport system, an integrated fair collection system, equipment, and traffic signaling systems were damaged. It will cost city of Johannesburg close to 500,000 to repair the four stations, whilst Etegini will have to spend more than 550,000 to also undertake the repairs. Prasa was also affected by the unrest in both its case at Ennenhauten retail properties, development leases and stations, there is still some condition assessment still being conducted in some stations. The estimated repair cost for station stands at 1.1 billion rand. The unrest also affected a number of service centers, which include registering authorities and driver's license testing centers, DLTC, at a total of 58 service stations were affected. 29 service st centers of which 15 were in Gauteng and 14 in KwaZulu Natal. 27 post office sites which serve as registration authorities, two registering, registering authorities also serving as DLTCs, one in KwaZulu Natal and one in Gauteng. Our core responsibility is to enable economic activity and mobility for citizens.
to access social infrastructure and amenities. Our plan, our action plan therefore focuses on this enabling role working with other stakeholders. The mining sector has identified the following challenges which rely on road infrastructure. Transportation of explosives to mines, routes details to be provided on this, security of supply for petroleum products, deployment of security. Our recovery plan consists of the following. Continue with national transport policy and regulation to level the playing field. This will be achieved once the new economic regulation model is implemented consequent to the passage of the bill before parliament. The department will continue to strengthen and support our integrated law enforcement strategies along freight corridors. Sandra has surveillance cameras on some sections and this data is shared with net Jock as required. Participation at an ongoing joint law enforcement operations that include unannounced visits to the freight operators, business premises along freight corridors. The department is in the process of developing an operator permit card in line with the National Road Traffic Act requirements. And this will ensure that operators are now required to become uh, complaint to labor and immigration laws. Implementation of the freight logistics strategy interventions, which include operator accreditation, policy and regulation to support migration of freight from road to rail, rail infrastructure investments, and the operational efficiency improvements. We'll continue with National Road Development Plan by Sandra and providing support to provincial road authorities working with the RTMC and provinces to restore DLCA uh, services, give impetus to the modernization of high volume commuter rail uh, corridors, support interventions that increase in rail capacity, patronage and fair revenue, accelerate measures aimed at improving passenger security, continue with expansion of integrated public transport networks. I thank you, Chairperson and honorable members. I will now invite uh, the department colleagues to take off in terms of uh, providing further details. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, so thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and members of the committee. What we will do now, we'll ask, I'll ask my colleague uh, to take uh, the stage and, uh, and take cue from what our minister has said. Uh, and yes, I've seen that uh, my colleague uh, forgot to show their faces when they are, when they are uh, about to talk. I, I think we, we need to lead uh, and follow our minister. Minister has been, we see, we saw him and uh, I would request that my colleagues uh, do so. Thank you very much. Prasan, show your face. And uh, I think Mwako will also do the same and keep him anana so that we can see that is a collaborative effort to the presentation. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, for that. Thank you. Thank you, DDG. Uh, good morning again, Chairperson, Minister, and Honorable Members and colleagues. Uh, so now I will take you through our presentation that we've prepared uh, for, the, for the committee. Our presentation will cover a brief introduction, uh, the impact of the unrest, the key strategic interventions that uh, this is cross-cutting with other departments, and then uh, specific plans by the department. So as, as mentioned, uh, the recent unrest uh, was focused mainly in Kalteng and KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, what we know is that the Kauteng and KZN, they make up half of the national uh, GDP and almost half of the population of the country are residing in these two provinces. The unrest impacted the transport sector at, on various fronts. As mentioned by our Honorable Minister, the first impact was the closure of the N3, which affected the, the flow of uh, goods between the two provinces. Uh, this was for four days. And, and effectively 12 billion worth of goods could not reach the designation, designations. In, in addition to that, 
there was a lot of supply chain bottlenecks which resulted in backlogs which are still being cleared and then transnet uh they 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 had to close the port which also affected the 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 distribution uh, and the supply chain uh, supply environment and what we know is that in uh in in in, South, in africa the durban port handles 70 percent of the imports and is a gateway to south africa so when this when this closure took place it, it was uh and with all the violence that took place, it was estimated that over 70 billion uh, is, has been determined as the, the losses. And this in, impacts on the investor confidence and also on business survival. There was some damage to transport infrastructure, which, which I, will, I will take you through as well. In terms of unemployment, uh, we estimate that 150,000 jobs were lost. We know at the beginning of the year, the unemployment data indicated that 32% is the figure of unemployment in the country. Yesterday, we heard it's now going to 34.1%. Uh, other impacts included the, the, the supply of food security, which was threatened. And ultimately, the majority of the, the, the poor were, were affected the most due to this uh, unrest and violence. So the full assessment uh, is still in progress. Uh, and we, we estimate that those figures that we provided you will still will, will likely grow. And even the unemployment uh, will also be, uh, will grow. And this will imply that a lot of people now will, will need to apply for unemployment benefits due to retrenching. There could be uh, more uh, court cases uh, at the CCMA because of the retrenchments, and then the poor investment outlook, which which uh, which will affect the country because we'll be unable to attract investments, and this has a direct impact on the job creation. The GDP is likely to drop. The replacement value of the trucks uh, is around two hundred fifty to three hundred million. What assisted us a lot uh, was the withdrawal of the services by the bus and taxi operators during this time. Once their services were with, withdrawn, uh, people could not uh, move very free, freely around. In terms of the road transport, uh, the, the full impact, uh, the hotspot areas was the Moy River, Tweedy, Escort, Burgville, Ladysmith, Sand River. So these were the key, key uh, areas affected. At Moy River, there were 26 trucks that were burned, but in total, there were 40 burnt or, or, or damaged during this period. As mentioned by the minister, uh, the entry uh, corridor, there's 6,000 vehicles, heavy vehicles per day, and this, this dropped to 100 vehicles per day. Uh, and then one of the impact of all this violence was that uh, uh, the operators were seeking alternative routes outside South Africa, and that includes the Namibia, Angola, Mozambique, and even further north. And this will have the adverse impact on the small economy. Some of the trucks had to be uh, parked at Bay Bridge. They didn't enter the country, so this, this also created a huge bottleneck at the border posts. The entry now is fully open. Initially, it was open very cautiously, and there were some restrictions, uh, especially during night travel. But now it's fully operational, and there's uh, there's a presence of uh, security along all the hotspots. Other areas that were impacted uh, was the the DLCA sites. Of the of the twenty nine uh, affected sites. 27 where actually the post office, which is a registration authority where you can do transactions and two sites where they were given their full driver license tens, testing center facilities that were affected. So the department is working closely with the RTMC and the, and the provinces to restore those, those facilities. Uh, the equipment are still under repairs. 
the equipment that cannot be repaired will be replaced by the RTMC. The post offices are, the most of them are still closed and, and those services are not uh, restored as yet. In terms of how all this impacted the, the food supply uh, in the country, we took stock uh, in, in outside KZN because the, most of the problems occurred in KZN. So outside KZN, this slide indicates the availability of the different commodities and how, uh, how many days stock that we had available. This, this was done earlier in the month. And what we found there that uh, we, we, we were managing the risk okay uh, on this. The areas where that, that we needed to focus on was the, the distribution uh, agents and the warehousing facilities, and then the, where there were storage and agro pro pro processes. So in these areas here, they've, they've identified, what you see on the red circles is the high risk areas and then the medium risk is the in yellow. So there's more visibility of uh, policing at the high risk than at the low risk, but both are being uh, monitored very closely. That's to protect the, the fuel in uh, the food sector. And then the mining sector, the areas that we identified that uh, was a high risk was the, the transportation of explosives and petroleum products. So the security escorts deployed along the, the routes to protect these com commodities. In the rail transport sector, uh, there was a lot of damage, mainly along the retail property section of, of Prasa and uh, a lot of vandalism, especially in the Durban and Amgeni areas. I'll have a slide to indicate the, the financial details coming up next. And there were some uh, railway stations that were also van vandalized. And I also have some breakdown of costing on that. So these slides covers the, the damages to all the retail uh, facilities uh, along the rail, uh, railway uh, lines or the rail reserves. Springfield Park, Amgeni, Amlazi, Kormashu, uh, and then Ispingo. So the lines that were affected was the Durban to Amlazi line, the Durban to Kormashu line, the, uh, and, uh, and the main hub was in, in Springfield. So this is where the, a lot of the damages took place. So these slides indicate all the, the details of the damages and the extent. This slide is uh, indicating the damages to the various railway stations that were affected. So this is the Amlazi line and uh, the, the Durban uh, North Coast Line, uh, 1.1 billion, uh, 1.128 million damages. On the public transport side, uh, we had to uh, suspend services uh, in, in uh, some of the municipalities to, uh, to protect the assets. There were still damages to six stations in Durban and six in Johannesburg. And two buses were, were, were also uh, damaged in coating. This is a slide indicating more, more data for what happened at Johannesburg. Uh, the estimated damages was 500,000 in Johannesburg, 368 uh, in, in Durban, and then for the signaling, 150,000. But the estimates for the equipment is still being uh, determined. So the, the, the key strategic interventions, so these are cross-cutting interventions uh, in, in, uh, in collaboration with other departments. Uh, the first one is the identification of all the hotspots along the N2, N3, and N5, where there's maximum security protection uh, at the airports and harbors. Similarly, protection, the, the, the key food production uh, facilities and infrastructure, Earlier on, I showed you that slide with the, with the red circles and the, the yellow circles, so that, that the high-risk areas were, and there's maximum security. The transportation of uh, liquid fuels and food processing ingredients. And then there was temporary sales points and storages uh, in rural and rural towns 
integrating SMMEs and SPASAs as part of the intervention uh, strategies that we put in place. And for the department side, we will, will, will strengthen our policy interventions and strengthen coordination and sharing of information. Then the N3, because it's the, the, the main corridor in, uh, in South Africa, there's a process to revive uh, the coordinating structure, which was, which was uh, chaired by the, the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Committee. So there's a process to revive that, uh, that structure so that the N3 can be managed more, uh, more closely and monitored better. Since most of the attacks occurred at night, initially traveling was limited for daytime hours until the threat was less severe. But as I mentioned, the roads are fully open now. There's no limitation uh, to, 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 for nighttime travel, but most of the traveling takes place during the day. Some of the other interventions uh, that are with, with other uh, departments, the departments of mineral resource energy, they have activated the liquid fuels task team. So besides the, the transportation that which we are monitoring, they are also looking at other aspects in the supply chain for liquid fuels, including LP gas. The, the Department of Public Enterprises, they, they've, they've invited the SOE representatives to be part of the, the teams with the, with the police. The, the army has been deployed countrywide in, in all these hotspot areas, and they've increased visibility uh, at uh, retail service stations, both in Durban and Johannesburg. There was police escorts for the petroleum products, the LP gas, and for transportation of uh, explosives to mines. And there's also escorts to the borders between South Africa, Lesotho, South Africa, Swaziland. And then along the, the N2, N3, and N5, there's also SEPs providing monitoring and escorts along those routes currently. Uh, the SND, NDF, they, they, they're also monitoring various uh, uh, key strategic points in, in different parts uh, of the high-risk area. So this slide here indicates all the details where they are, the loading terminals and also the storage facilities, the pipeline facilities. And there's also improved uh, increased police visibility at the service stations in Durban and surrounding areas. So this is to protect the, the disruption of the petroleum supply. Then there's the, these are the high risk areas that I mentioned earlier on. Both SAPS and SADF are on the roadside monitoring very closely, especially at Moy River and the other, other areas listed on the slide. Uh, since, since then, we've had no incidents uh, along these areas. Initially, tra travel was limited to daylight hours that it's open, the road is fully open and we haven't had problems. We also are uh, paying special attention to the toll plazas itself uh, to also protect the employees uh, who are in these areas. Uh, in terms of uh, the communication in, in, in interventions, this is cross-cutting. So there's a team that uh, this is in, in partnership with NetJock and other cluster departments. Uh, they're doing sector engagements, assessment of the damages, uh, dealing with the recovery plan, and uh, public engagements on, uh, on trying to, uh, to, to address uh, all these problems. And that, that in the, some of the target uh, audiences include the, the investors, and there's a global outreach program in place as well. There's also engagements with the, with the business and private sector. The specific plans of the department, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, and it was mentioned by the minister, is to fast track the implementation uh, of the single transport economic regulator bill so that we have policy and regulation to level the playing fields. Uh, we, had, we had problems in the past uh, on the road where there was violence, uh, in protest actions because of the employment of foreign nationals uh, in the transport sector. So we're working closely with Department of Labor and Immigration to address uh, the exploitation of by the employers in, in this area. Uh, 
one of the things that we have done is we, uh, we've, we've already gazetted the, the requirements for the public uh, PRD permit, which, which the drivers need to have to drive these vehicles. Currently, the, there's a SEDEC protocol agreement where all licenses are valid in, in the SEDEC countries by the different member states. But when it comes to the PRD permit, uh, there are some limitations. So we are introducing the similar limitations in, in South Africa. Uh, there will be processes to, to apply and there'll be validity periods. In this way, we, uh, we will be reciprocating with, with similar practices in, in, other, in other countries. And we can curb the, the rising employment of foreign uh, drivers in the country. So local drivers will be preferred. We will, we will strengthen and, uh, uh, and continue to support the integrated law enforcement uh, programs along the freight corridors. As mentioned, Sandrail has surveillance cameras and these details will be shared as required. There's law, ongoing law enforcement joint operations, which includes un, unannounced visitors, uh, uh, visits to premises. The National Highway Traffic Police will participate in these ones. And then we, we are implementing the operator card permit system, which is in line with the National Road Traffic Act. And we will ensure that operators are now required to become compliant with all labor and immigration laws. Uh, we'll continue with implementation of the freight logistics strategy, which, uh, which is three, with three focus areas of the operator accreditation look at the policy and regulation to support back to rail uh, strategy and uh, increase rail investments so that the operational efficiency can be improved. The Sandrail will continue with the, the national road development plan to improve mobility uh, in, in the country. RTMC is working with the provinces to restore the DLCA services and we will continue with modernization of the high volume rail corridors increase railway capacity so that we can uh, improve the patronage and fare collection, improve passenger security and safety in, in, in the rail system. Uh, whatever we do, whatever projects we implement, one of the outputs is we try to create more jobs and then we continue to expand the integrated public transport networks. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I will ask my colleagues to contribute if I didn't cover anything well. Thank you. Say thank you. Thank you for, for that uh, comprehensive presentation. Uh, and then probably then uh, uh, open the, uh, the floor uh, for clarifying questions and engagement uh, from other members. Chairperson. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Tabiza. Chairperson, I just wanted to check whether my colleagues, uh, because I did say that it's a collaborative effort. I don't know whether in the presentation there's something that we missed uh, so that they can uh, augment uh, some of the information. I just wanted them just to have one or two minutes uh, before Chairperson, you hand over to the honorable members. I, I would request that maybe uh, with your permission, Chair, ask uh, the public transport unit or head uh, Kivi Manana to show her face and add some few, uh, you know, matters or especially on the public transport uh, issues there as covered by our detailed presentation. I know they were part of, they were part of this and also ask Nwakoma Kaipi also uh, to add some views and some, some clarification or maybe amplification of some of the points that might be not that much clearer. So I would, with, your, with your respect, Chair, I would request that we do that quickly, just uh, two minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Tagusa. Uh, let's, let's then get the identified uh, uh, people to make some additions. Thank you, um, Honorable Chair, and thank you, Mr. Tlabisa, uh, and good morning to everyone, our minister and uh, members of the committee. Um, there isn't really much to add, just I think to highlight that um, in addition to the impact on infrastructure, the operations were also impacted uh, because services were suspended. That meant then 
um, that operators were not uh, providing services. And even after the services had, resu had resumed, uh, the passenger numbers were still low. Um, in other services, they've been able to recover and in others they've not. And I think largely it, it must be due to people being unemployed now. And so, um, and also another impact that most of the operators or authorities have experienced is the loss of revenue. Um, so we need to look into how then we're going to be uh, recovering all of that. Um, so basically that's that. There isn't anything else to add. Thank you, Mr. Tlapisa. Uh, thank you, Kivi. Uh, let me request my colleague, Yengwako, to please share some views on the rail side. And then we can hand over to you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Mwako. Uh, good uh, morning, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Committee, Honorable Minister. Uh, just in addition to uh, what has been presented uh, by my colleague is that Prasa did uh, stop the services uh, during the time of, of the unrest in order to make sure that they secure the asset, especially the rolling stock, hence in our report uh, that we are putting forward, there's no, there was no damage to the rolling stock. Uh, it was only to the properties in terms of development leases, because we did dispatch uh, security to make sure that our depots are guarded in that particular regard. One of the critical aspects we want to uh, highlight is on the development leases especially with the damages that uh, has happened in terms of the retail sector. We obviously, that will affect price in terms of the income that we generate from our secondary mandate in terms of the payment of leases that is estimated at around between 18 to 20 million for the coming few months in terms of what we get. That's in a nutshell, Chair, that I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and members and Minister. So that's where we end our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's then uh, take this opportunity to thank you uh, and your team for the for the presentation. Uh, I have made, I have noted uh, uh, the hand from Honorable uh, Matebula. I've also noted a hand from Honorable uh, Prata, Seth. Let's start with Honorable Matevila. Thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity and thank you for the presentation. Um, my first question will be, what temporal measures did your department put in place to assist on community where service center are that are affected by the unrest, especially in KZN and Howdy. Uh, the second one uh, is what measures have you put in place to assist taxi industry who, who are also affected by the unrest? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Matebula, Honorable Ratusat. Uh, Chair, sure, thank you very much. Again, I apologize for my camera not being on, but as I said, I'm struggling with a bit of flu. Um, Chair, you know, the minister speaks of rail, and in my various personal oversight visits to the harbour and assessing the transport system down there, it's quite clear to me that rail is, is one of those things that you would love to work. You know, only 3.5% of freight in South Africa is moved on rail. And obviously we would all like that to be different. But it does appear that the transport industry has moved past rail. It's kind of like if you were to make the post office the best service in the world, people will still send emails. And so the same argument follows. People will not start send, stop sending emails because the post office is not working properly and it's the best service in the world. And I'm concerned that we put a lot of, we should be putting focus on rail, but it cannot be seen as the total end all solution to the problem because simply because rail only takes freight so far, it still has to be moved by truck. 
by big truck and into a distribution center and then by small trucks. And so I would like to just hear from the minister in terms of what we are going to do to make sure that the road infrastructure supports the massive burgeoning of the trucking industry, because that is inescapable. And we will never have a situation where rail will, will deliver goods directly to a distribution center, for instance. It will not happen. And frankly, rail also takes too long. Um, it is <laughs> heavily complicated by a lot of red tape that one has to go through to get stuff onto rail. And also, it is slow. Um, goods are delivered from Johannesburg to Durban overnight and vice versa. And it's quick and it's efficient and it goes directly to the customer. So whilst I agree that rail is an important component in our transport setup, it cannot be seen as the cure for everything. And, and I'm concerned that we are not focusing as much as we should on the transport, uh, on the trucking sector um, in, in favor of this pop dream of, of a fantastic rail system that I'm not entirely sure everybody will use in any case. So that leads me on to my next point, Chair, which is the, the task team that was supposed to have been established to deal with the N3 corridor. Now, Chair, 2018, 2019, we've seen the problems at Moy River. This is a hotspot and it happens every single year for varying reasons. This time it was unrest related to whatever the instigators were pushing, okay? It is obvious that it's going to happen there. It started on the Thursday after the former president was admitted to the escort correctional facility. Uh, is the minister truly telling us that no, no measures were put in place immediately on the Thursday, knowing that that would be a hotspot? It's been a hotspot before. And uh, for me, it doesn't, that, that, that task team is clearly not working in terms of crime intelligence, in terms of being aware of the fact that that was going to become a hotspot. The closed KZN down uh, hashtag messages were going around. Now, I know that the minister is very active on social media. Um, they were going around on the Wednesday and the Thursday. For me, the, the blocking of the N3 corridor at Moy River was absolutely and utterly predictable. And then that also brings me on to Moyville and Brantville. Now, Brantville, for those of you not familiar with the area, is an informal settlement in that area. It's a township development. And it appears to be a ready source of, of Jean Provocateurs, a ready source of disgruntled residents who are quite happy to either be paid or to persist, participate in anarchy. Because every single time that there's a problem at Moy River, at that particular toll plaza, where the, where the trucks queue up in massive long lines to, to sleep over before they go down for the final leg to Durban, and they come there, and it's all the folks from Brentville, and they're a ready supply of... of, of um, I'm not, please, I'm not talking about all the people in Brantford, but it certainly seems that Brantford plays a massive part in the unrest that happens at that Moira River toll plaza. So, once again, the hotspot was there. Why was it not picked up? Why, why was it not closed down immediately? So, the question I need to ask the ministry is, has there been any consideration whatsoever to moving that toll plaza? Moving it to an area that is more remote? That is not right next to a populated area where people are, uh, it's easily accessible in, in terms of burning trucks and perhaps moving it further back towards Johannesburg, maybe between Moira and Escort or further down the road where, where it is less easy to access. One of the presenters said one, one, of, the, one of the good things in this is that Santaco and others reduced their services, which meant that people could not move around as freely. Well, in Moy River, they literally have to walk across the road and start torching trucks. It's too easy to. So has the minister considered the relocation of that particular toll plaza? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Brotiseth, uh, Honorable Khayal. 
Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, also thanks to the Minister for the opening remarks on this uh, subject matter and the presenters. Uh, Chair, um, one of the issues that we keep on raising uh, uh, in the select committee uh, when it comes to uh, uh, law enforcement and, and also safety is the issue of uh, perhaps the department uh, uh, considering uh, 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 utilization of the drones uh, to monitor uh, both uh, the the road, especially the the freeways, and um, the the rail the railroad. Um, whether the if we could perhaps get an uh, indication as to what is the department uh, doing with regard to uh, this matter, um, the. The second question is related to the, the infrastructure uh, that uh, was damaged, uh, the, some of the buildings, uh, as well as the uh, uh, roads and rail. Uh, so with regard to, for example, the other economic sector briefings that we've been getting uh, from uh, DTIC, uh, small businesses, uh, the, the indication was that some of the businesses are in short, and therefore Sasriya will come in uh, with regard to uh, the claims. What I'm not sure is that whether, because I didn't see anything with regard to whether these uh, uh, buildings or, or properties are in short with Sasriya. Uh, these uh, DLTCs and, and, the, and the also South African post offices uh, that have uh, been touched, uh, others have been uh, damaged. If I can just get clarity, because I saw something about uh, 500,000, uh, um, uh, uh, particularly in Johannesburg. Um, I don't know whether it's a, it's a claim uh, that will be paid by the uh, Sasria, or is it going to come from uh, the departments, both at a national and provincial level? Um, but I also want to check uh, with regard, as I was indicating, for example, small business development and the uh, DTIC, uh, the, the, there are monies that they have reprioritized uh, in their budget, including uh, IDC and the uh, a national empowerment fund. They have reprioritized their budget, but there are also money that are coming from the national treasure, treasury. I, I just want to check that uh, in, in whether there are any monies from treasury that are going to uh, assist uh, the transport sector. Uh, um, whether, but also, what does it uh, this say? Uh, uh, the unrest and looting and the destruction of property, what does it mean in terms of the impact uh, on the department's uh, plans? Um, the, the next issue that I want to raise Chair, is, uh, is that uh, be, even before the, this unrest and the uh, looting in KZN and uh, uh, Houghton, there have always been challenges with regard to the torching uh, of the trucks, uh, particularly in KZN, perhaps and also other areas. And uh, some of the complaints uh, are that uh, uh, companies are employing uh, the foreign nationals uh, at the expense of employing uh, the, the South Africans. I saw that, that there's a slide that uh, talks to uh, collaboration between the Department of Employment and Labor and the Department of Transport with regard, regard to labor migration uh, policy or laws. <clears throat> if there are any uh, time frames uh, with regard to that, because uh, we, the, the issues that uh, in, in, in KZN and uh, uh, them might be resolved, uh, but if this issue is not revolved, resolved, there's no guarantee that uh, the touching uh, of drugs will not uh, uh, continue even after uh, the problems have been uh, uh, resolved. 
So there's a slide that talks about the current state of uh, uh, South African food. Uh, there are specific uh, number of days on which some of the commodities will be available. Uh, for instance, it says that uh, wheat will be it will last about 50 days. Uh, if you check uh, from the time uh, that uh, the unrest uh, took place, uh, it, it, it gives an impression, therefore, that we're past the 50 days. Now the question would be, do we have now wheat? Because the wheat that was there was going to last for 50 days. But also there are other products, such as sunflower, <laughs> meat, and so forth. I don't know if uh, that slide is uh, not outdated. Uh, if it's outdated, can we be uh, updated uh, to what is the situation uh, of food supply uh, in the country? Uh, thank you very much, Honorable uh, uh, Chair. Thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Chair. Let me also uh, add uh, some few questions. Uh, uh, I'm more uh, attracted to a point that was raised around um, the magnitude of, uh, of of this violence on uh, on, uh, on, 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 on on our GDP, and uh, correctly so, it was pointed out that uh, uh, this looting that affected two provinces. Uh, these two provinces account for over half of South Africa's uh, across domestic product. And uh, uh, with regard to the point that was raised around the, around the disruption at, uh, at, 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 at the ports arm of state logistic firm, uh, Transnet in this instance, and also the uh, and also its impact in terms of uh, 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 the, the, the uh, delaying fresh fresh, fresh produce exports. I just want to get a sense as to whether uh, uh, what is the situation now, uh, uh, <clears throat> whether to a certain extent the, there is there is movement there. Uh, I think this is quite important because, because uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, the expectation is that the impact will be massive in terms of uh, in terms of our in terms of our third quarter. Uh, the the second point relates to to uh, to the the PCC. One of the key strategic interventions that is raised is around the revival of the of the uh, uh, presidential infrastructure coordinating committee uh, uh, on the uh, entry highway. Uh, I think the question that relates is, is directly linked to, to 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 the point that was raised by. I uh, honorable Dr. Seth, because I think from the presentation, it is quite clear that this attacks uh, mostly to occur during the during the night. Uh, uh, so can we draw a, a parallel between between uh, what happened in 2019 and, and last year and this? I think the reason why I'm posing this question is just to whether because I know that there's a team that has been engaging with the people that uh, in the past touched the charts. Uh, could, uh, could, could, could they provide answers in terms of probably the experience that, they, that they've had uh, in terms of uh, how the disruption uh, took place around Moya River and also the, the strategic uh, uh, nature because I think what we heard was that the first major activity that took place was the touching of those 25 charts, the blockading of the, of the road. So then you could see that obviously uh, there was, uh, there was a, a sense of appreciating the impact of that in terms of uh, disrupting even the accessibility of, uh, of, 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 of our law enforcement agencies to, to 
tomorrow that we are told, told. Uh, the the uh, last one uh, uh, relate to <clears throat> relate to the point that was raised earlier on around uh, uh, the SADC, the SADC countries uh, looking for alternative routes uh, as opposed to as opposed to to the N3, uh, the trucks. Uh, at an international relations level, has there been an, an, an engagement uh, between between uh, between the department and probably those investors, or probably even the the countries uh, uh, who who are who were affected? I guess you have correctly pointed out when it started the, at, the, at the Bay Bridge border, a lot of trucks uh, uh, had parked there for quite some time. Uh, hence, they are now looking uh, for alternative uh, 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 other areas. The, the, the biggest challenge will be for us as a country to, to lose uh, the, the, the opportunities and the, the comparative advantages that we have as a result of our network. Has there been an engagement just to try to ensure that uh, we don't lose uh, this, uh, this, this niche uh, because uh, uh, it, 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 it is quite important that uh, uh, there is uh, that, that, that level of engagement to, to, to try to, to uh, impress upon, upon a business and those investors that indeed uh, uh, security will be provided uh, because uh, linked to the issue of investment is the issue of security. Even investors have the view that uh, their trucks will be touched. Uh, there will be delay in terms of uh, transport. Uh, definitely, they will look for other avenues. So, hence, uh, I want to, to, to just ascertain in terms of authorities that we that, that we have uh, in terms of uh, what governs what what governs uh, what are the is the is the, is, is the uh, uh, public transport? Uh, what is it that we are doing to ensure that we uh, convince them that indeed, as government, we are putting in place the necessary security arrangement to to guarantee their safety? Thank you. Let's then give over to to, to the to, to the team, and then uh, probably uh, the minister will uh, will guide in terms of how the process must unfold. Chairperson, I had raised my hand. You didn't probably. Oh, know. my apology, Honorable Dango. Yeah. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Minister, and thank you to the team for the presentation. My question actually precedes the unrest. As the rail line that goes from Springs to Randfontein, which is con completely stripped at some stations to the plinth, and now that I drive past, the fencing is being removed. And the rail line that runs from part of Soweto, especially Cliptown, that has similarly been stripped. Um, and Minister, <clears throat> the stripping of these rail, rail lines, I don't believe it's just criminals. This is counter-revolutionary. This is how it started in northern Mozambique. This is how it started in other areas. And I think we need to be very, very vigilant around the stripping of state infrastructure and have a, 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 a legislation around the stripping, stripping of state infrastructure. I mean, the Cliptown police station, which is historic, is, is stripped to the plinth. Thank you very much. And when will that become, become operational again, if we can hear from the rail sector? Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Dango. Honorable uh, Minister. Uh, can uh, Tavisa and the team respond, and then I will level up to some. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Minister. That have been uh, raised. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Minister, Honorable Chairperson, and members of the committee and my colleagues. Uh, we are going to take turns and respond to uh, questions, uh, uh, as my colleagues have been noting them. Uh, let me start with uh, the introduction of the drones. Uh, from Honor High, especially on the monitoring of the major corridors that are affected recently 
uh, and also previously with the, the current uh, touching of trucks and, and the looting thereof of cargo uh, uh, along the in transit. I, I think uh, that one uh, uh, at Sunral, because these major corridors, they, they are managed and controlled by Sunral, which is one of the entities of transport that is uh, managing the, the national road the asset register and the man management thereof. So uh, I know that uh, they have been looking into, uh, you know, the uh, looking using the drones in making sure that, uh, you know, because there were a lot of uh, stealing of cables along the corridors just to make sure that the, the, the toll gates uh, are not functioning. So they have been looking into that, although they do have uh, online and up day-to-day uh, -day, uh, security on strategic points where the major uh, infrastructure is that is managing, uh, uh, controlling also the the running of, of the of the toll gates. But right now, uh, uh, Sandral has been looking into into the drones. Yes, of course. Uh, the only challenge that now they had when they were looking into the project itself its entirety is that the uh, uh, the drones, uh, unfortunately, at night they can't work. Yet these incidents are happening at night. So. Uh, when I was checking with the, the leadership of Sandral uh, and the management there, they, they were looking at the specialized cameras that can also try to focus and identify those kind of shenanigans that are, hap are happening along the corridors at night. So they said it's quite an expensive exercise, very expensive equipment that needs to be installed, but they are still looking into that and making sure that these kind of drones are employed along major corridors, your N3, your N1, where these uh, uh, these incidents ha have been taking place, and uh, from Devon towards the city D city deep here in Gauteng, and beyond that towards the N1 from Pretoria, uh, Gauteng towards the Limpopo, uh, and all in those kind of major corridors. So that is the project that Sunral is looking into very seriously, and it's quite an expensive exercise. But they haven't uh, dropped the ball to that. Nothing is falling through the cracks. They are they are working through that. To see how, what is what what is that they can do, they're saying these specialized cameras are quite expensive, so that is where it is now. So it's a project that they are embarked on, so that they can assist all of us along these corridors. That is the first one. Uh, I think on the issue of uh, the uh, the reprioritization of budgets, yes, I remember at the asset clusters of DGs uh, after this unrest and. Uh, uh, and, and also the meltdown of economy. Uh, so, uh, National Treasury has been very uh, central uh, here uh, with the, the office of the president in ensuring that the budgets are being reprioritized, including DT DTIC, uh, because they are also looking into the, uh, you know, uh, to, 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 to the development of our economy and, uh, and, and, and the likes uh, also to support our economy, the rebuilding of our eco reconstruction and uh, 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 reconstruction of our economy. And uh, that is where it is now. At, at the DG cluster, this is what is being discussed. What we can do is to firm up maybe at a later stage uh, to see what is it that has been uh, managed insofar as this is concerned. Uh, talking about uh, the reprioritization projects, we would not have the figures right now to see how much is being uh, you know provided insofar as the support of the small business, insofar as these other local authorities are concerned. But as transport, uh, I would just confirm that uh, we do not have a, a dedicated budget that will be ring fenced uh, to deal with the, the hardships that has been happening, except that we have deployed our law enforcement agencies along the major corridors as the minister alluded in his opening remarks uh, in ensuring that this is very safe, the corridors are safe and so forth and, and so forth. But when it comes to the reviewal of our indicators and targets on our annual plans, yes, that is what we are doing because our plans have been disrupted since COVID-19 uh, inception and until now, now this has also been happening in terms of the Thakari that has been happening in our construction sites, as particularly where Sandral is working, where you find that there are serious delays insofar as the implementation of those uh, uh, programs are concerned. So with that, we, we, when you plan to deliver so many kilometers of roads, it's, very, very, it's gonna be very impossible to do that because of those kind of challenges. But we do have the catch-up plans 
with the provinces when we talk about the implementation of our program where uh, we are partnering with the provinces in the implementation of those uh, infrastructure programs. We are working very closely with the provinces insofar as the review and of our, of our uh, technical indicators as well as the annual performance plan targets are concerned. That is what is happening now. So it's a, it's a continuous project um, and program between ourselves and our partners, our delivery partners, our delivery wings, and our agents insofar as this is concerned. Similarly, it's happening with Sandral. We review their, their, their plans also uh, because they, have, they are directly affected with the unrest in, in the communities when they are building the roads. So that, that is what uh, we are doing insofar as that is concerned. The prioritization of budgets, yes, uh, that has been discussed in detail uh, insofar as the, you know to reprioritize budgets to, uh, to alleviate hardships as a result of the looting, as a result of COVID. You had to start it way back during COVID and to redirect funding as to, uh, and, and to make sure that uh, that is what is happening. So uh, on the, uh, yeah, the touching of trucks and uh, that has been happening, yes, is correct for some time. Uh, it is a result of those allegations of our South African drivers uh, who are forming themselves into some movements of some sort, who are saying they are fighting the foreign uh, truck drivers who have been occupying the space here in the market space uh, within the trucking industry in South Africa. So that is why uh, the Department of uh, Labor and, and, uh, and Employment is leading this uh, uh, together with OMA first, because we felt that they need to lead this uh, because it's more about uh, the labor issues uh, as well as how do we people come in into South Africa uh, to, to look for job opportunities. So Home Affairs is very central to this. That is why uh, Home Affairs are working very, uh, very closely uh, with the Department of Labor and Employment. We are also participating very strongly as the Department of Transport because we have got an interest what is happening on our roads. We don't want any disruptions on our road network. So that is why we, 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 are, we are partners insofar, insofar as this uh, cluster of ministers is concerned. But we don't lead to the, the Department of Labor and, and, uh, and Employment is leading uh, and also supported by other departments as well, like, uh, like ourselves. Uh, so, uh, it, it, this, it, well, I, I will leave it uh, to, 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 to my colleague uh, at, uh, at, uh, at uh, rail to talk about the affected areas uh, within the rail space, uh, how that is being handled. But I, I can just uh, say that the disruptions, uh, you know what is happening in Moy River, yes. Uh, that is why Minister was alluding to a fact that the, 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 the JCPS the JCPS cluster is very much on top of the game. And they have been identifying quite a serious number of uh, incidents that have been happening there through intelligence. And that is why you will see that it has subsided. And, uh, and, and uh, this kind of uh, ill discipline and, and, uh, and the sabotage of the economy uh, from the coast to the inland is being snipped, is nipped on the butt because you see some arrests that is happening uh, through the sister departments uh, in, in government, which are part of the JCPS cluster. So uh, yes, it's happening at night and, and it's, it's quite a, a very uh, disturbing uh, incidents that are happening, but you want to believe that it's gonna come to an end because we do have uh, deployment. Even now, the, you see the, 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 the SNDF is fully involved now in those corridors uh, and uh, they, are, they are very, they are visible. They are very, very visible. Uh, and uh, you can see that everything is, is coming to normality. Yes, the issues of the SADC, uh, uh, SADC protocols and the SACO MOUs, we strictly stick to that. And we work uh, collaboratively with the SADC regions, EAC and COMESA insofar as uh, the issues of uh, safety are concerned. We, we talk about employing our, we do have our, ro our road-based entity, which is called the, the Cross-Border Transport Agency which is, uh, is our implementation arm insofar as the coordination at SATEC level is concerned, uh, insofar as the, the, the governance of, of transport, the transport governance through the borders of South Africa, uh, and those are adjacent to, 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 our, to, to our countries or the sister, uh, the sister states uh, within the SATEC region. So that is what uh, is happening. It's a continuous engagement uh, between ourselves through this, uh, you know, this unit, uh, which is, which is 
uh, which is taking a, a patent from ourselves and directive and mandate from ourselves, from the minister, and ensuring that we do engage on a regular basis insofar as the, the governance, the transport governance through the borders are concerned. Yes, uh, introduction of this uh, big uh, infrastructure that is running between uh, Zambia and, 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 uh, and, 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 uh, and Zambia and Namibia via Mozambique is quite taking a lot of trucks away from, uh, from the, 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 the N2, the N1 and the N3. But we are constantly talking to the issues of, uh, the, you know, the governance issues between the countries in ensuring that the, our N2, our, our N3, our N1 are safe as the, because there's a serious deployment. Even the static region, they can see that a government of South Africa is doing extremely well in keeping those kind of, uh, you know, ill disciplines and lawlessness on our road network. So I think it's not going to be a, a easy for the people to leave uh, the harbor of uh, Durban and go somewhere else because it's the shortest distance uh, when you go inland from using the N3. Although it's a road base for now, but the moving cargo from road network to the to the rail network, that is what the minister is pushing us to, to do. That is the freight logistics strategy, which is part of uh, moving cargo from, from, from the road to rail. And that is handled by our, our unit, which is the ITP, as together with us, we are very much involved at the Rose Branch. So that is one of the cutting edge uh, uh, policy, uh, policy document that the minister is wanting us to do, moving the freight from rail to, to, to from, from, from road to rail. So that is where we are now, uh, but serious engagements are happening. I will ask my colleague Mwako to talk about the stripping of uh, the rail lines and, and, and fencing, which has been an albatross uh, on us as a department because of this staggering that has been happening across uh, across the precinct of, of the rail space uh, with those people who are coming up and, and take our signals and, and causing all of chaos within our road network. I will ask my colleague therefore to take through that, to take us through that in Wakoma Kaipia, uh, will take us on that. So if there are anything that maybe I would uh, have left out, uh, we will uh, we'll be guided by our honorable minister, but let me ask first uh, my colleague Wakoma Kaipia to take us through that. I will also ask Kibi if I've left something on the public transport space uh, where we, there was a, 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 a clarification question from the honorable members about, uh, uh, from uh, Mema Tebula about the service centers and the taxi industry as to how uh, we, are, we, we are dealing with those kind of, uh, yes, transport trans, as a transport department. Except that we do participate, I must say, we do participate in prof joints uh, as well as the national joints where the JCPS cluster is very central to those kind of activities, uh, where we also play our role in terms of uh, the development of those plans and the, and the action agenda to deal with those kind of issues that has just happened. But I would like my colleague, uh, uh, Kili Manana, to check to this after my colleague, Nwako Makaipia, on the rail space. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, Minister. Then let me just hand over to my colleagues uh, maybe to take us through that one as well. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, DDG Kabisa, honorable members, and chairperson and, and minister. Just to uh, uh, bring clarity on some of the issues that have been raised by the honorable members. Firstly, on the issue of uh, stripping of the, of, of the network in terms of the rail line, we do agree with honorable uh, member uh, that uh, this is a very serious matter that we are concerned about as the department. And in how we've been dealing with it is that uh, uh, through the leadership of the minister, we've been engaging with other members of the security cluster to be able to look at this uh, issue so that it's really classified as economic sabotage because we believe that these are just acts of really trying to destroy the infrastructure that government has. And we know uh, we have had those kind of challenges and COVID-19 uh, was even worse in terms of how our rail network was 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 attacked, and with 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 Prasa, we have developed a a plan of how we then recover our corridors, especially starting with our super cost station and corridors around in Gauteng. and then one of the approaches that we are doing in terms of making sure that we secure our rail network and be able to run uh, proper services is that. Uh, as part of the corridor uh, modernization uh, program, we will be starting with corridors like Mawapane Line, 
where we'll be putting the wall in to be able to secure the infrastructure. And in addition to that uh, rehabilitation of putting the, there are some security innovation that we are putting, which will be putting in the issue of technology to make sure that we, we, we have armed response, e-guarding in, in terms of installation of cameras. And the one of the elements that the uh, uh, honorable member I talked about in terms of the, the, the drones is one of those technology mix that we are considering working together with Prasa moving, moving forward. So the broader security approach is really to make sure that we first secure the corridors and when we then secure the corridors, how do we then bring other intervention to make sure that beyond the physical security that we have employed, that we are insourcing internally, we're able to deploy technology to assist us to respond quicker on those, on those particular issues. With regard to the, generally on the recovery, on the unrest, we yes, uh, part of, uh, in terms of what we have in our secondary mandate, will therefore reprioritize some of the budget, especially in some of those uh, uh, areas where we have uh, some damage of our, where we have big tenants to be able to recover the income. But majority of some of those stations are part of our uh, insurance portfolio and will be submitting some insurance claim across some of the damages to be able to make sure that we start to to, to deal with the with the recovery and make sure that the tenants we can fix and the tenants can be able to move in, in into the space. That's the, in a nutshell. Uh, that how I'll, I'll then respond to to the question. But maybe just to then say uh, the clip town line as part of when will it be able to be operational? It's one of our second phases of of, of those lines that we want to corridor to 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 rehabilitate and fix. And we have even got some approach from some guys in the private sector who are willing to work with government in terms of fixing of that particular station and we are having some engagement in that regard. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I can ask my colleague, uh, uh, Kibi Manana, also just to add uh, some few issues there, which I, I highlighted uh, as per the notes that we made from uh, Honorable uh, Matebula. Uh, I will ask my colleague to do that, the service centers and the taxi industry uh, in Safaris. But I did allude to the JCPS cluster that occupies the agenda of the prop joints as well as the, the national joint in so far as the coordinated approach is concerned. But let me ask my colleague uh, Kibi, uh, who heads the public transport unit in our department to take us through that. Thank you, Kibi. Thank you, Mr. Shabisa. Um, there were three questions. The first one is the relief fund for the taxi industry. Um, just to indicate that uh, as a department, we have not received any requests um, for relief from the industry, um, even at a city level, um, both in Etiquini as well as um, city of Johannesburg, there hasn't been any requests for relief. Um, and so there isn't really any dedicated allocation of funding uh, from National Treasury for this. Um, in Etiquini, though, the mayor, uh, based on the role that the taxi industry played during the unrest, um, he's been engaging with them and he set up a task team um, uh, to make sure that they become part of the recovery plans that are currently being developed um, in the city. And um, in both the two, yeah, and so in, in Etequini, um, yeah, I did indicate that they, they haven't received any requests for relief funds. The second question had to do with the insurance claims to Sasria. Both the two municipalities that have been affected, Etequini and uh, Johannesburg, are submitting claims uh, to Sasria. Um, both of them did indicate that they were in the last stages of ensuring that um, Sasriya uh, uh, makes uh, a, an assessor available to then confirm the costs that they estimated uh, so that an approval can be made for their claims. Um, and then there was a third issue around the impact on the department's plans. Um, with regard to the city of Joburg, they are continuing to operate the Rea via services. Um, even though the four stations have been damaged. Uh, the one station that has been seriously damaged, that's where um, the operations are not taking place. But in the other ones, um, the, repair, the, the damages are very minor. 
Um, so they're continuing to, to operate. And then the second one in, in Go Deben, Go Deben, because it hasn't launched the C3 corridor as yet, um, they're not operational. But because, the, because of the damages, this will impact um, the date of the launch because they were supposed to be launching their services in October. They've indicated that uh, it might impact it by 30 days or so. Um, so basically that's where uh, matters are. I don't think there's any other question. I think Mr. Shabisa responded to the issue around the community services adequately. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Minister. We would like to, to pause here. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Yeah, no, thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, 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 first on the security matters, um, the net joints continues to, I mean, not the net joints, the, the National Security Council meets and uh, we have been reporting to the National Security Council in terms of security uh, concerns. Um, uh, I think uh, it is now well accepted that uh, from the president's brief to the nation that uh, we, we could have done better and we reacted timelessly on some of these um, uh, activities that took place of anarchy and so on. <laughs> Henceforth, after consultation uh, with the multi-party uh, forum and parliament and all of that, there was a joint consensus for extra deployment of, uh, 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 extra deployment of uh, uh, SANDF supporting uh, the police, and that is what is happening now. Um, and um, most of the, I think, uh, we have read also in the public domain that most of the people uh, who are implicated have been arrested, and as we continue to see that happening, uh, and so on. So, which is a common commendable on the part of, of the police. Today we are reporting on what this has cost us. Uh, so it's not just a small matter, uh, just a normal looting and all of that. It was an extraordinary looting and uh, with targeted intentions to cripple the economy. Uh, so, and at the same time to weaken the security apparatus uh, of the state and uh, render the state weak. And uh, in that sense, uh, anarchy will reign and everything will just come to a standstill. So that was the ultimate objective, simple as it is, uh, rather than the polemics flying around us, what do we mean? When you want uh, to achieve political goals, uh, which are not uh, anything either than political goals, to bring down the state, you target the economic machinery. And uh, if you talk about the heartbeat of the economy, uh, freight uh, industry and transportation is key. And in this particular instance, if you kill the N3 and the N2, particularly Joburg and Deben, uh, where in which uh, the transportation of goods is by road, then uh, you have affected the, the economy. And then you kill the entry points and all of that. And then the country will crumble. So people come to ask what is happening now when you talk about unemployment and all of that staggering figures, we are at 36 something percent, which is the highest and all of that affecting youth and women. Even those who were at least trying to survive have also been affected. And then you ask, we have a pandemic on the other hand. On the other hand, we've got this particular anarchy that has got a ripple effect on the functioning of the economy. So in this particular instance, we need to understand that this, this it was not even a strike. It was, a, it was, it was something that uh, they wish could generate to a general strike. In political terms, a general strike would have meant that the workforce withdraw their work power and refuse to go to work 
support the anarchy. They did not. People were intimidated. And these were acts of sabotage, sporadic, and all of that. It was not spontaneous. It was planned. Something spontaneous is something that you join because your blood is boiling about an injustice and you simply get yourself in. None of us who joined the struggle today can define the moment, the time and the date they decided to join. They joined because the township was ungovernable and uh, every entry point was shut down because people were fighting against apartheid. And you find yourself in, and in no time you are arrested, you are in jail. And then you are a political prisoner or you are a political detainee and all of that. This was not the case. This was simply acts of sabotage, well-organized, orchestrated intimidation and running down the economy. So it needed the state to do as it does now. Uh, of course, our people have now realized that joining the looting has not been an answer because they tended to be affected, not only in their pockets only in terms of unemployment, but also in terms of food redistribution and uh, the functioning of the local economies and all of that and small MMEs has actually affected them. So. That is the case. So the, the security had to be heightened to a particular level. And the National Security Council uh, has had to intervene and do that. And we applaud the taxi people uh, and uh, who, on their own volition, without being commanded, said, no, we cannot, for economic reasons, because we are tied to this local economy of uh, malls and all of that. If you kill those malls, you kill our business. Go to Alex. I went there, the taxis were not operational. And then they had to pay for their taxis and all of that. And then they don't have money uh, to do that. They know that they were going to be affected and they took a decision. If you remember the incidents of Port Elizabeth where taxi owners uh, were going all over PE uh, with some of the people who were, in, who were purported to be involved, uh, going around telling people that there is no strike here. So this thing did not engulf the entire nation uh, and all of that. It didn't. So uh, our people simply walked away from it. So now we are faced with the consequences of that. So uh, uh, Chairperson, we are under no illusion that uh, uh, about the limitations of rail in relation to speed. However, we cannot turn a blind eye to the damage to our roads as a consequence of heavy freight moving on our roads. It is on this basis that feasibility study on high speed rail between Pretoria, Johannesburg and Devon uh, will cater for passengers, but also for freight. The, the, the work update, uh, the national freight logistics strategy Will, will, will pay attention to the futuristic evolution of freight movements in our transport network and uh, ensuring seamless integration across all modes. This must be balanced by investments where we make uh, in the investments we make in transport infrastructure in enabling the implementation of the logistic strategy. Uh, we don't have that and we're in the process of implementing that as we speak. We don't have a, a, a rail policy. We're in the process of implementing that. We've got a white paper process of the rail policy uh, that we are finalizing before end of the year. You are right. Uh, uh, that is why PRASA has intervened decisively on matters of security and uh, to ensure that uh, the vandalism uh, that we have seen, you know, that has uh, escalated uh, during the period of the shutdown it's not going any further. You have seen the deployment of heavy security uh, uh, in our network. As much as there was attack, uh, attempts were made, but it could not. They were stopped right in their tracks. It was fire with fire. And uh, the rail network was well protected. And uh, if we had acted, even during the shutdown decisively like we did now, we would have minimized the extent of the vandalism we have seen. Uh, which now falls also into uh, the program of, uh, you know, uh, revamping uh, of the infrastructure in terms of our rail network. There are also plans to move the Moy, Moy River Plaza toll. Um, uh, this is a matter that must be dealt with through a comprehensive risk assessment. 
uh, by Sunral in collaboration with uh, the concessioner, uh, the concessioner, considering the cost implication of such decision. So there's an honorable member who basically asked this particular question. So it has been considered, uh, particularly as we speak uh, uh, at the present uh, uh, at the present moment. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, 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 that will be my my, my contribution, uh, adding to what uh, members have given to the committee in terms of the details, and uh, also the political context and understanding of what uh, we are dealing with and uh, our intentions uh, going forward. Uh, the 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 effect of this uh, violence that have engulfed us in the past uh, two weeks. Uh, we will still feel them in the next couple of years to come. And by that time, we will have forgotten what happened. But nonetheless, that is the consequence of becoming a ruling party and government. Uh, you lead even in difficult times, and our task all the time is to explain and to act and intervene. So the package of interventions we seek to make, even this afternoon, as we consider to consider uh, the recovery plan, it will uh, also entail some of these things that we have talked about today here before the select committee. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for the uh, uh, manner in which we have addressed the responses that was made uh, by, by your team. Uh, I want to believe that uh, members now are in a much more better position to, to appreciate the, the implication of the unrest in both Kwazulu Natal and Houghton uh, on, the, on the transport sector. Uh, we will continue to, 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 to monitor uh, the uh, specific plans uh, as part of the recovery effort that were outlined by, by the department uh, uh, on uh, uh, reversing uh, what has happened. Uh, the, the, the team led by the minister was able to, to clearly illustrate to us the, 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 uh, the implication cost-wise uh, the trucks uh, that were tossed uh, in terms of numbers, uh, the estimates in terms of uh, passengers that were affected by the by the entry route closure in KZ, uh, uh, the total number of vehicles that were also affected as a result of the closure of the plazas uh, and. Uh, the team was able to isolate those sites uh, from the hook uh, to to May South uh, that were affected, and uh, uh, the presentation also uh, put before us the, uh, the the road closures and also a uh, uh, number of employees that were that were impacted upon by by the unrest uh, in those. Uh, in the hook in Volga into Yala in Muir River. But I think what is quite important to us is the, the cleanup uh, that has uh, uh, taken place. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, but, but more than that, uh, the key, key strategic interventions that were put before us, uh, particularly as at the, at the economic cluster, I think we appreciate that minister uh, more than that, uh, the uh, key com government communication interventions and who's in charge as put before us. But uh, like I said, the key specific plans uh, as outlined in the last two slides uh, will be of key interest to us in terms of interacting with the, with the, the implementation of this, of this plans uh, as part of the recovery uh, effort. So uh, allow me uh, on behalf of the uh, honorable members to, to indeed express uh, our, our gratitude to, to your minister and your team for, for the uh, pain and effort that you took to appear before the select committee to uh, uh, address us on those two areas of presentation. Uh, the, uh, 
We have outlined the processes that will follow with regard to the single admission amendment bill. But like I indicated with regard to the presentation on the impact of the, of the address on the, on the transport sector, uh, we are then able uh, to augment uh, the uh, picture that we had uh, from other areas uh, that, that, that we need to engage more so the, uh, from the uh, economic class for, from the trade and from the trade and competition cluster uh, we were able to to receive further uh, on this but now with the transport sector we have a, a complete picture in terms of uh, what is it that has to be monitored what is it that has to be to be uh, followed as a way of uh, ensuring that the hardship uh, has suffered uh, uh, and also impacted on our economy is mitigated. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, you are now uh, uh, released uh, as we finalize our in house issues. Uh, thank you a lot, Minister, and your team. Thank you very much, Chair and members. Thank you very much. Thanks. Honourable members, we have uh, two sets of ministers. Uh,